Good day, everyone. I hope you are all doing fine. Today is May 19, 2022. It's already 6.23 on my phone, and I have to attend this here in this meeting. Before we begin, let me check first. Are my audio and video clear on your end? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How about the slide presentation I created? It's already presented on your screen. Can you all see it? Yes, sir. It's visible. Okay. Thank you. So if all are good and you are also good now, then let us commence. Today, we are going to learn about question tag. To start, I want you to listen to a recorded conversation between a boss and a job applicant. Actually, we have there on the following slide the written dialogue of the conversation as well. So this conversation um, is entitled The Interview. And as per credit, this is from the bbclearning.com. I mean, bbclearningenglish.com, a website on the internet. Okay, so as I play the recording, what I want you to do is to listen and understand the story while you are reading silently the written dialogue on the following slide. Is my instruction clear? Yes, sir. Yes, okay. Sir. I will now play the recording. Grammar Challenge from bbclearningenglish.com Good morning. I'm not too ready, am I? No, not at all. You've been given a cup of coffee, haven't you? Yes, I have. We should be ready for you in a couple of minutes. You wouldn't mind filling in these forms while you're waiting, would you? Okay, no problem. I'll give them to the receptionist when I'm finished, shall I? If you would. The hours are 9.30 to 5.30, Monday to Friday. That's normal, isn't it? And you'll be working in the stats department. The receptionist shows you where that is. Well, yes, you did, but and you haven't had any major illness, have you? No, but I did want to say that you've had a look at the term. Yeah, but I think there's been some sort of mistake. Mistake? You were going to Joe, having an interview for the position of account manager, aren't you? Well, no, actually, I'm in IT. You do have IT vacancies here, don't you? Yes, of course. Your name is Chris Jones, isn't it? I'm afraid not. My name's Chris Smith. Well, I could be there. I'm going to pick that. You will accept my sincerest apology, won't you? Of course. No harm done. Grammar Challenge from Okay, so that's the conversation again um, between a boss and a job applicant. So now, I want to ask if you really understand the story. So let's start with you, Miss Angel. Okay, Miss Angel, in a summary, what was the conversation all about? Please. On the text or based on the conversation, the conversation between the boss and a job applicant by by the name Chris. The boss interviewed Chris. However, uh, the boss seems to have reviewed a wrong information about Chris. Okay, thank you, Miss Angel. But um. Let me catch you there now and allow Mr. Charles to to continue what you, the summary you started. So, Mr. Charles, please continue. What happened or what was the conversation all about? So, based from what I have understood from the dialogue and also based from what Miss Angel already mentioned the boss seemed to have known a wrong information about chris there must have been some mix up of the documents of the job applicants and so the boss took and reviewed a wrong one that's why misunderstanding occurred in this dialogue the, bo the boss was applying Applying, uh, rather, Chris was applying for the position of account manager, but later 
it turns out that Chris was actually applying for an IT position. Also, the boss mistakenly um, thought that uh, the person he was talking about was Chris Jones, but later it was clarified that the person he was talking about was Chris Smith. And on the end of the dialogue, the boss apologized to this mister misunderstanding. Okay, thank you, Charles. Okay, so based from the summary that you um that you were able to say, I can see that you really um understood this uh, the conversation you heard. So um to move forward, let us uh, let us have this um five phrases. So this time what I want you to do is to take note of this um phrases. I'll be giving you one minute to write this. So I mean to write them. Your time starts now. All right. Are you finished writing class? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, done, sir. So on the slide, we have five different phrases. What are you going to do with them? So here is my instruction. It's the instruction. Arrange these phrases in the order that you hear them. So what are the phrases that we are going that you are going to deal um to be um to deal with? Will you please read the phrases, Miss Ocampo? Yes, sir. You do, you are, you haven't, you will, you wouldn't. Okay. And again, what are you going to do with these phrases, Mr. Charles? Um, we are going to arrange these phrases in the order that we hear them. Okay. Thank you for your responses. So this time I will replay again the recording and what I want you to do is to listen carefully and arrange these phrases in the order that you hear them based on the recording. Is my instruction clear? Yes, sir. Okay. So I will now play it again. Grammar challenge from bbclearningenglish.com. Morning. I'm not too early, am I? No, not at all. You've been given a cup of coffee, haven't you? Yes, I have. You should be ready to get something. Wouldn't mind filling in these forms while you're waiting. Okay, no problem. I'll give them to the receptionist when I'm finished, shall I? Thank you. Now at 9:35 30 a.m. Monday to Friday. That's normal. And you'll be working. Staff department. The receptionist shows you where that is. Well, yes, she did, but and you haven't had any major illness, have you? No, but I did want to say that you had a look at the terms and conditions, haven't you? Yes, but I think there's been some sort of mistake. Mistake? You are Jones and Jones, having an interview for the position of account manager, aren't you? Well, no, actually, I'm in IT. You do have IT vacancies here, don't you? Yes, of course we do. But your name is Chris Jones. I'm afraid not. My name's Chris Smith. Oh my goodness, there must have been some sort of mix-up. You will accept my sincere apologies, won't you? Of course. No harm done. Grammar Challenge from BBClearningEnglish.com Okay, so that's the recording for you once again. Now, can I hear your arrangement, oh, Miss Sir Charles? These are the arrangements of the phrases based from the order I heard them on the recording. The first phrase is, you wouldn't. The next one is, you haven't. The third phrase is, you are. The fourth one is, you do. And the last phrase that I heard was, you will. Okay, nice. But how about you, and how about you, Miss, Miss Angel? Do you have the same arrangement of these phrases? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I also have the same answer. Okay, so you have the same arrangement. But still, I want yes. to hear your answer. So what is your arrangement? 
first is you wouldn't, you haven't, you are, you do, and you will. Okay. Thank you for your responses. So, actually, you were able to, um, to get the correct arrangements of these um, phrases. The correct arrangements of these phrases are as follows. You wouldn't, you haven't, you are, you do, and lastly, you will. Now, let's leave that and finally move on. This time, what I am, what I want you to do is to to pay attention to this um, set of phrases. So, we, in the left side, we have three phrases. Will you please read them, um, Mr. Charles? So, the phrases on the left are you haven't, you do, and your name. Okay. So, I'm on the other hand, we have also three phrases on the right side. Will you please um, read them, uh, Ms. Char Angel? Yes, sir. On the, le uh, on the right side, we have don't you, isn't it, and have you. Okay. Thank you. So, in this moment, I will again play the recording. And what I want you to do this time is to listen carefully to pay attention to these phrases and match them in order i mean match them um based on how they were used in the conversation did you understand my instruction yes sir okay so let's play the recording again listen attentively <laughs> See learningenglish.com. Good morning. I'm not too early, am I? No, not at all. You've been given a cup of coffee, haven't you? Yes, I have. Thank you. We should be ready for you in a couple of minutes. You wouldn't mind filling in these forms while you're waiting, would you? Okay, no problem. I'll give them to the receptionist when I finish, shall I? If you would. So, the hours are 9.30, 5.30, Monday to Friday. That's normal, isn't it? And you'll be working in the stats department. The receptionist showed you where that is, didn't she? Well, yes, she did, but and you haven't had any major illnesses, have you? No, but I did want to say that you've had a look at the terms and conditions, haven't you? Yes, but I think there's been some sort of mistake. Mistake? You were at Jones and Jones having an interview for the position of account manager, aren't you? Well, no, actually, I'm in IT. You do have IT vacancies here, don't you? Yes, of course we do. So your name is Chris Jones. I'm afraid not. My name's Chris Smith. Oh my goodness, there must have been some sort of mix-up. You will accept my sincerest apology, won't you? Of course. No harm done. Grammar Challenge from BBCLearningEnglish.com Sir, I think you're muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, again, now, can you tell us the answer, Miss Angel? Yes, sir. Uh, after hearing again the dialogue, my answer is, you haven't is for have you. Uh, you do is for don't you. And your name is for isn't it okay how about you charles okay. i have the same so what are answer your answers is miss angel um the okay. matches are you haven't and have you you do and don't you and lastly your name and isn't it okay thank you so here are the correct matches. But yes, you did, sorry. Okay. So you haven't is for have you. You do is for don't you. And lastly, your name is for isn't it. Okay. Now, 
if I were to ask you about the, or if I were up, uh, uh, I were to ask you to name the the phrases on on the left side, I am pretty sure you are going to answer that, yeah, they are phrases. What if I rather ask you to name the phrases on the right side of the slide? What do you think? Um, are these phrases actually called these um, phrases that um, are seemingly in the form of an incomplete um, question? Again, let me reiterate the question. What do you think are um, the term that we used to refer to these um, phrases on the right side, on the right, um, the right side of the slide? Miss Angel? Uh, sir, I think that is what we call question tags. I just assume that that are that are called or these phrases are called question tags. Okay. Nice memory, um Miss Angel. So I mean, you hit the nail on the head, Miss Angel. These are actually um, what we call question tags. So again, what uh, what are they? What are these phrases called again, Miss uh, Mr. Charles? Um, the phrases on the right of the screen are called question tags. Okay, that's right. So now. Um, in this very moment, let us now um, look at the sentences um, from the conversation using these phrases and question tags you match as uh, you match um, earlier. Okay. So in the on the following sentences, we can see now that um, those phrases that um, are in the left side earlier and those are you haven't next is you do and another is your name we can see um now that these um phrases are actually part of a bigger or of a more um longer group of words or our or word construction okay so this um group of words, you haven't had any major illnesses, you do have IT vacancies here. Your name is Chris Jones. What do we call to this um, group of words, which is consists of a subject, a verb, a predicate, and to and in, in which um, expresses a complete thought? Miss, Char Miss Angel. Miss Angel. Uh, other line. Again, Miss um, Angel, can you please repeat your answer? Uh, so, uh, so, sir, the underlined here are called um, sentences or statements. Okay, that's right. So these are sentences. While on the other hand, the phrases that on the right side that we had um, we have dealt earlier and we have later find, found out that um, it is um, um, in technical terms this is called a question tag is in terms of position based on the following sentences um, how do you describe question tag Mr. Charles? Um, based from my observation sir I think that question tags are of then placed after the sentences or statements. Okay, so that's right. But let me just correct one um, word that you use. It is um, not often. I think that it is always. That a question tags are always um, attached at the end of the sentences. So earlier we have, um, we have known that a question tag is in um, being attached um, at the end of the statement. So we have here um, to um, 
two portion we have the statement and the question tag so now let us know more about this um two um two portion okay so now i want you to focus on this um underlined words what do you think are these um underlined words called miss angel the underlined words indicate that it is a subject i think okay that's yes that's right so these um these underlined words are actually what we call sentences i, I mean i mean subject of the of each um of um of, of the following sentences sentences or statement while on the other hand uh the underlined words in the right side of on the slides what do you think um are these underlined words called mr charles i think sir that these words at the end of the question tags are a pronoun okay so actually they are called pronoun or to be specific subject pronoun so now what i want you to do is to look at these underlined words closely what did you notice in this underlined word between these underlined words um miss angel sir i've noticed that the subject is like copied at the end of the question tag because in the first and second sentence you is copied to the end also so i think if we form a sentence with a question tag uh, we will just copy the subject okay how about you mr charles um, my observations are um i think the subject on the sentence matches with the subject subject pronoun on the question tag because if we look at the example the subject you on the sentence matches the you on the question tag on the latter part of the entire sentence okay that's right so actually these underlined words are just like what um john charles said are much they i mean they match with each other and in the case of um the third sentence the, the subject her name but it still um it ma it it still matches with um with the subject pronoun used in the question tag in terms of the um of its case since your name is a concrete a concrete noun since we cannot um copy we cannot just copy your name in the question tag what we are going to do is to use subject pronoun that will still agree or matches with the subject pronoun in the sun in the question tag okay on the other hand okay what do you think are these um words um being encircled called um miss angel Sir, uh, the encircled words are called, I think, verb, verbs. Okay, but to be specific, they are called auxiliary verbs. Okay, so now what I want you to do is to observe them um, closely. Do you think they have differences? Do they have or they have similarities? What did you notice, Mr. Charles? Um, I have noticed that the auxiliary verb being used on the sentence is different from the auxiliary verb being used on the question tag. Nice. How do you say so? Because um, if we observe the first example, the auxiliary verb being used on the sentence is haven't while the auxiliary verb on the question tag on the first example is have. That's it, Charles? And 
if we also observe the second example, the auxiliary verbs do and don't seems to be opposite. So I think that explains why the auxiliary, auxiliary verbs on the sentence and question tags are different. Okay, thank you. How about you, Miss Angel? What did you notice between the auxiliary verb in the, sta in the statement and the auxiliary verb in our question tag? Sir, I think that if we use a positive verb, auxiliary verb in the statement, then we will turn it into a negative one or vice versa. Okay. Thank you, Miss um, Angel. So on this, um, actually the relationship between the auxiliary verb in the statement and and the auxiliary verb in the question tag, just like what you have observed, they are always opposite of each other. So the rule um, is seems like positive, negative, negative, and positive. Okay, so at last, based from the recording and, and the written dialogue we have, um, we had earlier, and um, from this um, sentences on the screen, what do you think the function being um, expressed or being, um, or, or the, what do you think are the function um, do this question tag serve based on the conversation you heard earlier and based on the, what you understand, Mr. Charles? Based from my, what I have heard from the dialogue, um, I would like to focus on the third example. Your name is Chris Jones, isn't it? So I think the purpose why the boss asked this question is to confirm if he was talking to a person named Chris Jones. That's why I think the purpose of such question tags is to confirm something. Okay. How about you, Miss Ocampo? I think uh, I think of the same answer with Charles, so that it is used to confirm something so that the question tag's purpose is to ask and to confirm something, sir. Okay, that's right. So, um, based on our, um, based on the recording, the written dialogue, and these um, sentences we had on the screen, the purpose of the question tag um, in most cases, and in our cases, is to confirm something. Confirm an information that um, someone thinks is true about someone or something. And yes, in simple um, term, um, in our cases, um, question tag is used to um, with a confirmatory function. So um, to summarize what we have learned about question tag, again, in terms of position, how do you describe question tag, Mr. Charles? Where do we always, um, where do we locate question tag? So in terms of position, question tags are always um, attached at the end of the statement or sentences. Okay, so that's right. Question tags are always attached at the end of the sentences. Another um, point that we have learned in our discussion is that the subject in the statement and the subject pronoun in the question tag are, uh, I mean, matches or refers back or agrees with each other. 
as per the the auxiliary verbs in the statement and the auxiliary verb in the question tag, we have known that they are always of opposite manner or of opposite polarity. And lastly, we have known that the function of question tag in most cases is what? It's again what, Miss Angel? Uh, the question tags are used to confirm something and used as a confirm confirmatory function. Okay, that's right. So at this point, to assess whether you really understand the our lesson about question tag, let's have an activity. So for your activity, what I want you to do is to construct sentence, I mean questions, of course, in the form of question tag that are used to confirm something. So what I want you to do is to at least each of you um, construct three questions in the form of question tag that um, has confirmatory function. So I'll be giving you three minutes to construct your sentences, I mean your question tag, and your time starts now. Okay. Are you finished writing, class? Yes. Okay. Now, let us now start with you, Mr. Charles. These are the question tags that I have um, written or constructed first she went to the supermarket yesterday isn't she second he owns that white sedan doesn't he and the third one is you were in a vacation last week weren't you okay thank you charles now it is your turn miss angel the sentence I wrote is number one. She is pregnant, isn't she? Number two, he is a licensed teacher, isn't he? Or isn't he? Exactly. We have exam tomorrow, haven't we? Okay. Thank you for all your... um for all those um, question tags. Okay, so in this activity, it's just proved that you learned something about our lesson, which is about question tags. So at last, I just want to ask if you have any questions, clarifications about our lesson. Our lesson, brother. Okay. If that is so, then um, this ends our um, lesson discussion. Thank you for listening. Thank you for your active participation. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.